Didn't mean to embarrass you, sorry. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's great to be with you here for this special gathering today. Gathering around God's word and sacrament, a celebration of God's grace to us each and every day, and especially God's grace through Pastor Knazer and his ministry here and uh, in other congregations over the many years that he has served. So reasons to thank and praise God today for, for all the blessings that he gives to us through his public called servants of the word. Uh, welcome to our guests and visitors. Glad you could be here. Uh, we do ask all of our worshipers to please sign the friendship register. It's on the center aisle of each pew. Order of service is printed out for you in the bulletin. It's also going to be on the screen as well. We begin with the opening litany from Psalm 119. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. We continue with our opening hymn, hymn 897, Lord Jesus, you have come.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lord Jesus, by your gracious coming into the world, you destroyed death and made all things new. Grant that we may never tire of proclaiming your salvation to the ends of the earth. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
First reading from Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 16. Some of the themes in the readings today might seem a little unusual in a different setting, as we are reminded that as human beings, certainly we have our weaknesses, and it's only the power of God that really allows us to do the work that he calls us to do. We recognize that uh, the mouths that we are given, the tongues that we are given to speak God's word are from God himself, and the word and the power of the word is the working of the Holy Spirit. And so as public servants of the word, proclaimers of the gospel, uh, we are called to be faithful and use the gifts to the best of our ability, trusting that God is working through us with his word. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, What about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and he will be glad to see you. You, sp you shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. The word of the Lord.
God's word from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul writes, And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age, or of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden, and that God destined for our glory before time began. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Please stand. The gospel recorded in John chapter 15. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. The hymn of the day is a special hymn. Uh, we do not have the music printed out for you. Hopefully the melody is, is catchy enough for you to sing along with. Uh, a, a revised version of the hymn for builders bold whose vision pure.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's Word we'd like to concentrate on this celebratory day is Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 through 12. You'll find it printed in your service folder. Then Jacob prayed, O God, my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, you who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two camps. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me, and also the mothers with their children. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. The word of our God. Dear friends in Christ, especially dear friends and family of Pastor Knazer, I think you know the story. 20 years earlier, in a misguided scheme orchestrated by his mother, Rebecca, he pulled what even today would be considered to be a first-rate scam operation Pretending to be his older brother Esau, Jacob shamefully took advantage of his father Isaac's blindness and his trusting nature, and he tricked him into giving him the blessing that he had intended to give to his son Esau. Now just a side note, a blessing back then from father to son was not just some well wishes for the future, but it had to do with inheritance as well. And in addition, God sometimes used the blessing from a father to a son as a sort of prophecy to convey great spiritual blessings upon an individual and his future children. At any rate, no sooner had Isaac done this than in came Esau, looking to his father for what he had just given to Jacob. Something else we learn from the story is that once a blessing has been given, apparently it is not reversible. It can't be undone, which meant that Esau was now out of luck. From what we learn in Scripture, it would appear that two brothers had personalities that were not particularly close, but as you can imagine, this whole event blew that wide open. And from that time on, Jacob had given his brother Esau a goal in life, a purpose, revenge. Out of respect for his father, Esau said he would wait till his dad was dead, and then he was going to hunt down Jacob and kill him. Mother Rebecca got wind of this. She told Jacob he needed to hightail it out of town and that he could come back when Esau cooled down. Well, 20 years had come and gone, and Jacob was still on the move. Lots had happened within those two decades. God had blessed Jacob with children and possessions and success beyond his wildest imagination. And at the time of our text, he was moving it all to a, to a new location. His whole enterprise was going to a new place. But now everything seemed to hang in the balance. Jacob's worst nightmare was about to be realized because to get from point A to point B where he wanted to get, he had to cross through the land that was inhabited by Esau and his people. And he was scared. So he sent messengers ahead to Esau with lavish gifts, hoping that it might placate him and they might be given safe passage. But the messengers returned with disturbing news. Esau and 400 of his men were on their way at that very moment to meet Jacob. So now what? Preparing for the worst, Scripture tells us that Jacob immediately divided his people into two groups so that one of them could escape while the other one was under the attack which he inevitably thought was going to happen. And at this point we come to our text. Then Jacob prayed we read. And notice the content of his prayer. As Jacob reflected on the many blessings that the Lord had given him, that the Lord had given to him and had worked through him, 
What he was most mindful of was how personally undeserving he was for all of them. What he thought about was the grace of God that had been showered upon him for the last 20 years. This he summarized with these words, I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. And having experienced the full force of God's grace in the past, Jacob now relied on God's grace for the future. And to finish the account, Scripture tells us that the meeting between Jacob and Esau was peaceful and conciliatory. Why am I telling you this? Here's why. Today we are removed from this event some 4,000 years, and yet there are some striking similarities. Today, like Jacob, we are at a point of reflection. We're not looking back on the 20 years of Jacob in the greater region of Palestine, but we're looking back on the 42 years of another child of God that have been served in the public ministry. And as we look back, we see, like Jacob, blessings. What we see, as Jacob did, is personal unworthiness for all of them. But most of all, what we see, as Jacob did, is a tremendous outpouring of God's grace, which in this case has extended for over 40 years. So this is what this service is all about, really. It's a celebration of blessings. And while we are here, deservedly and certainly, to honor and recognize the ministry of Pastor Thomas Knazer, even more so, we have come here to worship and praise God for his blessings to Pastor Knazer and his blessings through Pastor Knazer. From this point on, I'm going to refer to the man you know as Pastor Knazer as Brother Tom because we were contemporaries and classmates and his last name started with K and mine with L and we sat next to each other in seminary and we had the distinguished position of being the only men in our class of average height in an abundantly tall class. <laughs> But Brother Tom, the first and greatest blessing which God has bestowed upon you is something which precedes your 42 years of ministry, something that goes back to your upbringing and the family that you were born into. The Lord in your grace, in his grace, gave you godly parents and placed you in a godly family. And through the baptism, through the waters of baptism, he brought you into his kingdom. Not only that, he nurtured you in the faith through Christian education, first in grade school, then in high school, then in college, then in seminary. But here's the thing. You did not choose to be born into that family. Nor did you choose to come to faith in Jesus as your Savior. All those arrangements had been made beforehand by a good and gracious God. And you know well that passage from Ephesians. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this, this faith is not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. That you and all of us here today are able to call ourselves Christians and jointly declare our sinfulness yet our unwavering confidence that our sins have been forgiven through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's possible for only one reason. God's grace. So God's first and most gracious blessing to you and all of us is that we can call ourselves children of God. But in addition to being raised in a Christian family, a second blessing which God has bestowed upon you, Brother Tom, is your own personal family. When Jacob thought, it's interesting to note that when Jacob thought he was going to be under attack, his, his first thoughts turned to protecting the family that God had given him. And you also have been blessed with a family. In fact, you've been doubly blessed with a faithful family. You've been blessed with a faithful and supportive wife, and again, a side note, we all know that you married up. <laughs> God's given you children, and now a grandchild, 
And what you all share together is not just a common name, but a common faith in Jesus Christ. And this is a blessing. That's grace. Pure grace. But there's even more. There's also your church family. For 32 years, the past and present saints of Woodlawn Lutheran Church have been involved and intertwined in your life and the life of your personal family just as you have been involved and intertwined in their lives. You literally have grown up together, together sharing the inevitable joys and sorrows that accompany life on this planet. And this then calls to mind one particular blessing that God has given you and the one that we are recognizing today. Namely, the fact that he chose you and called you and gave you the privilege of serving him in the public ministry. First as a vicar in Wisconsin Rapids, then out of seminary, assigned as a pastor to a group of saints in Indianapolis, then as a pastor to the people of Rice Lake, then for the majority of your ministry here at Woodlawn, and now going forward in a reduced but no less important ministry role at the newly formed West Dallas Congregation of Living Hope. And along the way, Lord has also used your gifts and your talents for the greater church in various circuit, district, and synodical positions, all of which raises some introspective questions which only you can answer, such as, is there a higher privilege than being able to devote oneself to the full-time work of the Lord? Is there a more important task than proclaiming the life-giving message of a crucified but risen Lord Jesus Christ as the world's only Savior from sin? Is there something of higher value than to be engaged in a profession where mere mortals have the honor of working with Almighty God's divine word and sacraments? And I know that you know the answer to those questions. That being said, when any minister looks back on his years of ministry, be it one or 10 or 42, he's struck with two things. First is his personal unworthiness and inadequacy to do what God has called him to do. And the second thing is God's amazing grace in letting him and choosing him to do it. In his second letter to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul refers to himself as a minister and to all future ministers as being jars of clay. And any minister worth his salt fully understands what he's saying. He was talking about the imperfect vessels God uses to pour out the treasures of his word upon his people. To preach and to teach and to handle the word of the living God, the maker of heaven and earth, our sanctifier, our redeemer, our provider and protector. Who's worthy of that? Not me. Not you. Yet God in his grace has given you that privilege for 42 years. And not only has God given you that privileged task, he's also sustained you in it for 42 years. You know what they say about privileges? <clears throat> Along with privileges come responsibilities. You probably told that to your children the first time you gave them the car keys, right? And the responsibility that God entrusts to his ministers is to be faithful to their calling and faithful to his word. And sometimes doing that is not always easy. It's not always popular. God never said it would be. So I would guess that within those 42 years were more than a few sleepless nights because of decisions that had to be made or discipline that had to be carried out. Within those 42 years, you probably experienced, like all ministers, some periods of self-doubt or disappointment or the loneliness that often accompanies leadership. Within those 42 years, and in various ways, you've undoubtedly endured your fair share of times of trial and testing. But God is faithful. And during those times, God in his grace was always there to sustain you and uphold you. And through his word, encourage
encourage you to carry on. And you did. And as God has given this great blessing of the ministry to you, he at the same time has brought great blessings through you. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 55, God tells us in his word that his word will not return to him empty or void, but it will accomplish what he desires and achieve the purpose for which he sent it. For 42 years, as Paul instructed Timothy, you have preached the word in season and out of season. And because the Holy Spirit works within a person through word and sacrament, it's really impossible to know how many lives have been touched through your ministry. With a little research, however, we can come up with something along the lines of hard evidence. According to the official church records of Woodlawn Lutheran Church, supplemented by your own personal records, this is what we learn. We learn that you have brought 247 infants and children, and presumably some adults as well, into the family of God through baptism. Following your instruction to them in the truths of God's word, you have had the privilege of confirming 257 children and 89 adults, and those are only Woodlawn records. You presided over 84 wedding ceremonies, starting those 84 couples on the right footing of God's word and prayer, and you conducted 136 funerals. Christian victory services, bringing the bereaved the full comfort of God's word and the assurance that those who die in Jesus Christ never really die, but they simply move on from this world to their eternal home. What do these numbers tell us? They tell us that you're a privileged, blessed man. And they tell us that God has brought great blessings to his kingdom through your faithful work. Work which won't end today, but will continue on in your new role as Living Hope Visitation Pastor. But today we stand back and we celebrate. Today, like the day Jacob learned he would be meeting Esau, it's a day of reflection. And what we find ourselves reflecting on is a 42-year 40 year testimony not just of one man's hard work or various accomplishments or endurance, but what is first and foremost a testimony to God's grace. God, in his grace, has brought great blessings to you, and for that you must be thankful. But God, in his grace, has also brought great blessings through you, and for that we are all thankful. So may God continue to give you strength and health and vitality to minister until that time when you meet him face to face in heaven, at which time he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue by confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Beat me to it. I was going to invite you forward. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, after many years of faithful service, Pastor Knazer is retiring from the full time public ministry of the gospel. Compelled by the love of Christ, he has labored in the Lord's harvest field and built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. He searched the scriptures for guidance and strength and faithfully proclaimed the law and the gospel to us and to all he served. At the close of his ministry, we praise God for guiding and guarding him throughout his years of service. We remember how the Lord has blessed the church through his ministry. For the Bible urges us to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you, Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Dear brother in Christ, in holy baptism, the Lord Jesus Christ received you as a member of his holy church and made you an heir of salvation. Through his word he strengthened your faith and created in you a desire to serve in the ministry of the gospel. Throughout your ministry, the Lord kept his promise to strengthen and guide you as you served his people. We praise God for your faithful service, and we thank you for your ministry among us. We join our hearts in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the blessings you have given to your church through the ministry of your servant, Pastor Tom Knazer. Continue to pour out on him the gift of your grace that by his example of faithful devotion to your word, he may be a blessing to many. If it is your will, allow him time for rest and relaxation. Keep him and his family safe in your care and watch over him, body and soul. As he remembers that his labors were not in vain, grant him contentment and peace. For past blessings and future glory, Lift his eyes to the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now, dear brother, may the Lord keep you from all harm and watch over your life. May the Lord watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. At this time, we present our offerings to the Lord. O Holy Spirit, enable each of us in our spirit to be fruitful in every good work, Give us a love so deep that we will desire to share our possessions and be moved to give generous offerings to the glory of our Heavenly Father, who spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all. Use our gifts to send the message of salvation in Jesus' name out to the world. Hear us for our Savior's sake. Amen. Please stand for the prayer of the church. In our prayers today, we mourn with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, Gary Brenzinger's brother, Bob Brenzinger, passed away yesterday morning, so we pray for Gary and his family. Uh, Marietta, Marietta Pausch um, passed away this last week. Her funeral uh, will be held at Good Shepherds on 
Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. Uh, she is the mother of Pam Hansen. Uh, we also pray for those who are deliberating calls at this time, uh, the call that I have received. Pastor Oftenberg has also received a call to serve as pastor at St. John's in Fremont, Wisconsin, and we'll be issuing a new call this coming Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. at Good Shepherds for 7th grade teacher for Living Hope. Lord of life and death, we thank you for all the mercies with which you blessed our fellow believers in Christ, Bob Brenzinger and Marietta Pausch, who have now fallen asleep. We thank you for having brought them to know your Son, Jesus Christ, and we pray now that you would comfort their families and all who mourn their death with your precious promises. Cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant their bodies rest, and at last, together with us all, a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. Teach us all to number our days, that we may gain hearts of wisdom, and finally be saved through Jesus Christ, our risen and ever-living Lord. And dear Lord, you instituted the office of the public ministry, and you have given your people the privilege of extending calls to serve us through that ministry. We ask you to be with those who are prayerfully considering these calls or who are about to consider them, that you would guide them to decisions that, will, decisions that will serve the best interest of your kingdom. As we await their decisions with, with patience and prayer, we ask you to continue to bless our congregation and its ministry so that your kingdom may continue to grow and flourish among us here in West Dallas. We ask all these things in your name because you are the good shepherd and you are the head of the church. And it is in your name that we also join together and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Congregation, please be seated. We'll have distribution on both sides of the church today. We'll begin with the handbell and the choir.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. <coughs> Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. <coughs> Good morning once again to all of you. It's been great to celebrate God's grace with you today, to rejoice in the work of our Savior, and to celebrate his gifts to the church, uh, the gift of public ministry where we hear and learn God's word and receive the wonderful sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. Uh, may God continue to bless us with faithful ministers of the gospel throughout our lives. If you are sticking around for the uh, meal and the program, it's going to be held in the Lamb of God gymnasium at the other end of the building downstairs. So uh, if you're able to do the stairs, wonderful. Uh, we do have a wheelchair lift all the way down the hall. You can go down there, or if you're parked out on the street and want to come around to the back parking lot, that's certainly an option too. Just obviously be careful of traffic for those coming and going. Uh, but hopefully uh, this will all go smoothly and we can get started around noon-ish. I uh, would ask Pastor Knazer and his immediate family to greet you as you leave today, as well as Pastor Lyra and Chris, if you could be out there to greet those who are exiting the sanctuary, that would be great too. So 
Um, very thankful you could be here, Pastor Lyra, to share this special message from God's Word for this special occasion. Um, on the table in the entryway, there's a, a folded sheets of paper. They're kind of, are they pink or orange this week? I don't remember. It's got the weekly announcements on, so please take one of those if you haven't had a chance to look at those yet. I'll just highlight a few of them. Um, so we've got Lenten services on Wednesday, 3.30 here, and at Good Shepherds. Good Shepherds is having the meal. Uh, I believe it's corned beef and cabbage this week. Uh, there's other options as well. So if you're planning on attending that, please sign up on the table in the entryway. <laughs> Uh, they also have the late service, 6.30 at Good Shepherds also. This coming Friday into Saturday, teen lock-in, 7 p.m. Friday, 7 a.m. Saturday. Uh, lots of fun activities for 7th through 12th graders. If you haven't had a chance to sign up for that yet, please do so with the link in the, in the announcement or talk to one of our, our leaders, Jackie Schatzner, Amanda Davis, or Anshari Klusmeyer. Uh, Christian Family Solutions presentation coming up here at Lamb of God School. Thursday, March 23rd, 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, anyone's welcome to come and attend that, uh, being a Christian kid in the electronic age. Uh, if you do plan to come for the meal at 5 o'clock, please sign up for that ahead of time. Um, I think that's about all I have here. Let me see. Uh, there's obviously a number of other things going on, too, so please take the time to read through those weekly announcements. Thank you to uh, all of our special musicians. Uh, for preparing faithfully and using their gifts to the glory of God today as well. Blessings to all of you. <laughs>